and a happy new year. Hope you've all had a fantastic Christmas and recovered from all the binge eating and drinking. Whatever else you guys get up to over Christmas. So yeah, what I thought I'd do is a recap really, looking back at the last 12 months for my collection really, and what the next 12 months have in store. Now, last year was very much focused on micros, wasn't it, for me? Uh, for those of you who know what I pick up. But yeah, most of it has been around micros. Uh, consoles haven't really had a, a look in, to be fair. Um, quite a big change to the collection last year. A lot of things went. Um, and some things, obviously, have come into the collection. But generally, yeah, it's it's been a bit of a... Probably had I probably had more change in my collection last year than any point in the last 10 years. A um, couple of new systems have come into the collection as well. A couple of old systems have gone. So yeah, it's just been a bit like that, really. It's not. Sometimes you need that, I think. Sometimes you get to a point where A, you're going to run out of space. B, you kind of refocus on something else um, outside of retro gaming. So yeah. So for me, I've, I think I've had a decent year got to say um some of the games i picked up i'm chuffed to bits with obviously like me like many other people you end, end up overpaying for stuff you really want because otherwise if you don't you don't get it and it's a bit like that sometimes isn't it? you can sort of moan about prices to your blue in the face but sometimes you just gotta pay the price unfortunately unless you are one jammy bastard in which case you don't but generally all the fun you do so yeah, so what I'm going to do, as per usual, well, I say per usual, I've not done one of these for about two years. Let's just go through each of the collections. There's not loads, I don't collect for loads of different things. I sort of kind of give you a bit of a summary of where I'm at and what I intend to do with said collections in the future. Some of it might be linked to YouTube, as in might do some additional videos, but generally it's more about the games in the collection. So yeah, I don't collect for loads, like I said, it's just mostly machines that I have nostalgia for. Um, very few machines I don't in the collection. Um, the ones I don't are now gone. So I did clear through my Saturn collection, Mega CD collection, and I've cleared through loads of the big boxed PS3, PS4 collector's editions. I've kept a few. I still have enough to fill, easily fill probably one and a half Billy bookcases of collector's editions. So there are some really nice ones, but the vast majority are just full of tat. When you actually open them up, as I did when I listed them, I opened them all up to have a look inside and generally it's just full of crap. Um, so yeah, I kept some nice ones like The Witcher 3, which is one of the nicest collector's editions out there. Uh, one I really love is the Resident Evil 7, which actually didn't make it to the shops because I think the container that it came in, I think all the stock got damaged more or less. All the chimneys fell off of the little porcelain, whatever they are, houses. Um, I managed to get one on eBay a few years back for a decent price, but yeah, I, I would love the American one because the American one's got like a music box. It's quite um, quite chilling to watch, really. Yeah, listen to. But yeah, it's, there's loads I like, you know what I mean? Like um, The Last Guardian. Some of them have nice figurines in them, but generally most of them are crap. So when I buy them in the future, because I, I do not buy nowhere near as many as I did, I need to just look at what's in them first. Um, which obviously is quite impossible, isn't it? Unless you watch a unboxing video, which is usually too late then to go and buy the actual collector's edition, which is probably sold out. So there's no real easy way of knowing. It's just, yeah, sometimes you've got to be a bit lucky. But yeah, I've slimmed that collection right down. It's a Saturn and Mega CD. I never touched. They were just sat there on the shelves. I just didn't have any nostalgia for them. Anything whatsoever. My, my preferred console wasn't the Saturn, it was the PlayStation which is kind of what I'm collecting for, albeit very slowly. So what I'll do is go through each set, as I just said, and we'll go through where we are. So let's start off with the Atari. Not only is it the oldest set, it is a collection I do enjoy getting games for. The games, yes, they look grim, but some of them played really well, and especially with two players as well. Now the collection did go down by about 20, 25 games last year. I cleared through titles like Circus, Slot Racers, Blackjack, and stuff that, to be honest, I'm never going to play again. But I have got a small list of games that I love to pick up to finish off some small sets. Um, if I ever get to a, a bigger place, I probably would love to expand on the Atari collection even more. But yeah, so Atari-wise, um, 
I've done a pick a pickup video, I've done a collection video for it, which I'll leave a link up there somewhere. Uh, and it hasn't changed since then. But what I'm trying to collect for is finish off the Telesis collection. I just love the vivid colours on these boxes, like some little simpleton. Um, but I'm missing a game called Coconuts, which is probably the blandest looking box out of them all. But then you get to the Telesis games, not Telesis, I've just shown you them, the Tiger Vision games. And you get, again, the games aren't as good as the Telesis games. <clears throat> but you do get this lovely kind of metallic effect going on. And the cartridges are generally in a really nice colour as well. So I am missing four, I think. One is called King Kong, which is in like a sky blue box with a sky blue cartridge. Probably the cheaper of the four. Um, I'm missing a game called Minor 2049 2, which is excruciatingly expensive. I'm missing a game called River Rescue, I believe, which I only just discovered this weekend. And another one I can't pronounce. But again, another really obscure title. So they're the ones that are on my list to pick up. Now, probably on average, they're going to cost me at least £100 per game. So it's not that I'm in a rush to pick them up. They literally don't come up very often anyway. So if they do, I may have to buy them. But it depends, again, what kind of values they go for, really. So the Atari is pretty much where it's at. Yeah, it's not going to change dramatically. Uh, what else we got? So, Commodore 64 GS. Again, I only collect the branded C64 GS cartridges. So, Ocean done them. Domark did them. Dynamic did them. Um, Micro Pros, I think, released a few. And System 3. That's it. That's the only publishers that brought games out for that system. So, I'm missing four from those publishers. I picked up one from Dynamic. Now, this game was not cheap at all. I've never seen it complete. I've seen a cartridge only many times. Not many times. Many times on Google. Never really seen it on eBay. Missed out on a copy of After the War. Keep going on about it. I am very bitter about that. That went for 10 quid. So what I picked up is Narco Police. Still sealed. Box is a lot smaller than I anticipated it to be. This was the only game I believe that was commercially released in the UK. Now, I'm not sure it was mail order only or it was actually released in the shop, so I'm assuming it probably was in the shop, bearing in mind it's sealed. But the cartridge version is brutally hard to find. Now, there are other games like, like I said, After the War, um, AMC or Astro Marine Corps, um, Satan, and I think there's one other game which is a Grand Prix game, motorbikes. Brutally hard to find. Available in the UK, possibly via mail order. Uh, available in Spain, but again, you, you never see them. That one alone, more common one, set me back £350, there or thereabouts. The second most expensive game for the GS I've ever paid for. Only Double Dragon was more expensive than that. But that I've seen probably less times than I've seen Double Dragon. So yeah, four more to get. I think it's going to be more luck than judgment with those, I think. But yeah, so like I said, I'm not into Commodore 64 cartridge games, like I don't know, the Sega stuff or the Commodore stuff. Um, but I would like to get some of the Sega games, like Zaxxon and Congo Bongo and stuff like that. But I'm not sure if they're only really readily available in the US. You very rarely see them in the UK. But yeah, so I've done a GS collection video as well. So apart from that, that's all the GS games I've got. Um, PlayStation, I've got nothing to show you here for the PlayStation. Again, very similar in size to the Atari, about 85 games. Um, I only really focus on games that came out in that nostalgic era for me, which was 95 to 97. Numerous games I still love to get. Rayman, for example, I don't have. That was a game I remember really fondly on a demo disc from the official PlayStation magazine. There's loads like that. There's loads of anomalies like that that I need to pick up. Not really anomalies, are they? But here's a few. Ace Combat might be one I still need in its original release form. Um, ESPN, one of the earliest games ever played. ESPN Sports, I think it was called. Stuff like that. I mean, I'm more than happy with just that. those two years. I don't be too greedy. The PlayStation's a humongous library. I can't imagine the PlayStation 1 collection being more than about 150 games. But I will do an updated collection video for that in the nearest future. The last one I did was about three years ago now. And it has grown. It's almost doubled in size since then. Um, 
One thing that really puts me off collecting PlayStation games is just the spines look bloody boring, don't they? The least, well, not the least attractive. You've got to put that down to the PS2. But yeah, I just don't like looking at them. They're really boring to look at. Um, so PS, Tari. Next up. Next up, we do have a pickup for this system, the FM Towns. Now, another system that I will be doing a, a, a collection video for in the near future. Uh, I've managed to pick up, I think, three games this year and the FM Towns 2 computer. And in good old fashioned Fujitsu fashion, it don't work. So, yeah, it worked for a while. The monitor's absolutely lovely. But all of a sudden, I couldn't power on the desktop. So hopefully it's something minor. I will get it sent off to be repaired. Um, but hopefully it's something minor. But they're not the most easiest machines to access. They really are not. They're a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, certainly something I would like to get fixed in the near term. But yeah, lovely machine. I do prefer the original um, FM Towns 1 machines. So onto the front loading discs. Because they're the ones I remember from reading an article in Ace Magazine. I really, really did. I never knew I was ever going to get one. I didn't feel I was going to get one at all, but I would love to have had one of those systems. But yeah, I oh, certainly wouldn't buy another one if they're that um, fickle. Certainly won't. I'd rather just stick with the FM Towns Marty console. But having the 4 meg of RAM opens up new opportunities. The games run faster, so it makes sense to get the newer model, really. So the game I've got to show you, which I haven't shown you yet, is Zach McCracken. Uh... And the Alien Mind, Mind Benders? I don't know. I've got this on the Amiga. I've never played it. I heard it's a very good game. Is it the follow up to Maniac Mansion? Well, so I'm not sure if Maniac Mansion got an FM Towns release. I'm pretty sure it didn't. Inside, you've got a normal bump there. Hint book, the instruction book. A couple of little cards. I'm not really sure what these cards are about, to be fair. But yeah, really pleased to get this. This was about as expensive to buy. On the buy auctions as that computer which is obviously that computer costs a hell of a lot more to ship than this game but yeah so i do have more fm towns games i'd love to pick up especially the lucasfilm games so you're looking at indiana jones and the fate of atlantis the last crusade loom the three that I, I can think of you've got uh, saturday night slam masters volfeed uh Puznik. there's loads of games that i'd love to have on the fm towns but they're all bloody expensive and hard to get so we'll continue we'll continue to look for flying shark which incidentally sold for about 1000 and something pounds yeah so i was watching it and i wasn't gonna pay that for it bloody hell certainly not imagine the tax on that christ so yeah i i kind of refrained even though i did bid on it i did refrain from going silly because that along with that and along with that would have just been stupid really a flying Shark is a very hard game to find, but it certainly would be top of my list of wants for the FM Towns. Even though apparently it's not a very good conversion. <clears throat> that kind of put me off a little bit. So yeah, FM Towns. So what I'll show you next is the Commodore 64. Um, Commodore 64 cassettes, I did lose quite a few games that weren't related to either the Hit Squad. Uh, Ocean. Well, Ocean specific games for the c64 like lethal weapon sleepwalker and stuff like that i had other games that i started picking up on disc which i sold um i don't want to go down that rabbit hole so yeah so thalamus system 3 hit squad nostalgia that's pretty much where i'm at with the c64 so the year started off uh needing one more game for the commonwealth 64 hit squad set that appeared around march time and that is lethal weapon um, this cost me more than it should have done. Bundle come up on eBay. I think I went straight in and asked the guy if he'd accept an offer. And he did. I paid for it, then he refunded it back two days later. Then the game reappeared on eBay. Well, actually, what he done, he broke the bundle up. Or whoever paid for it broke it up. Because uh, some of the games were listed on their own like this. And the rest of the games were listed as... Bundles. So yeah, a bit frustrating that was. I mean, especially if you paid for something, at least like honour it. But I don't tend to kind of make offers for stuff that I've been bid on. But yeah, I suppose karma in the end got me. <laughs> Probably. 
Not that I feel guilty or nothing, but it's um, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you win things. Sometimes you don't win things. It's just how it is. And I think if you sort of sit there and rest on your laurels, you end up with not a lot because other people do it. I've tried going down that route before where you sort of sit there thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. Morally, it's not the right thing to do. And then some fucker goes and does it anyway. So it really puts you off. But yeah, if you don't do it, you don't have it. Pretty much like that. I know it's a bit controversial in that, but generally I wouldn't do it if someone had bid on it. But yeah. So yeah, that cost me more than it should have done, but there we go. And then we got Amstrad Cassette. Now, Amstrad Cassette... Again, I only collect Hit Squad and one other series of games that I'll start doing the videos for very soon, probably. Yeah, I keep thinking the new year, but it is the new year, isn't it? So I'll start doing that soon. But besides that, it's only the two subsets that I go for. So this one came up around October time, um, which finished off the Amstrad Hit Squad set, and that is Skull and Crossbones. Only ever seen this game once before. But yeah, this was 150 quid. I think I've made an offer. I think he sat on it for a day or two and came back and accepted it. That was a bite now offer, that is. Um, actually, it wasn't a bite now. I think it just had bids or best offer or something like that. I think his start price was quite high. Um, I think I picked up one or two other Amstrad games this year RBI Baseball. I think I picked up a Fun School game, which was the last three that I needed to complete that set. Not a very good game. It really is a quite poor game to play, to be fair. But again, I found the Hit Squad collection on the Amstrad relatively cheap compared to the others, but still difficult to collect for. Then on floppy disk for the Amstrad, I picked up two more Ocean games, and I picked up two um, Impulse pickups, really. Never heard of them. They're just very late releases. And again, on the Amstrad floppy disk, when you go for Ocean and Imagine titles, I do have a few other extras up there for example like Nigel Mansell and Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis but I'd rather have those on the spectrum just you never very rarely see them on the spectrum so <clears throat> Amstrad disc wise we've got Short Circuit I thought I had this game I've seen this more than once before but I didn't buy it because I thought I had it this came up finally this year and realized I hadn't got it. it cost me about 100 euros uh, good game good arcade adventure really enjoyed it to be fair once you kind of get used to how to play it and then you've got the other element of the game which is the arcade element apparently ocean didn't like the idea or gary bracy didn't like the idea of the adventure game was it gary bracy or someone else ocean didn't like the idea of it so they had to make the arcade version as well which turned out to be the worst part the next up we've got miami vice again this one i've never seen before picking this one up Knew it existed just through uh, a couple of resource sites for the Amstrad. But again, a very dire game. Uh, I just cannot control the poxy car. It's quite an erratic little car. And it's quite a strange mechanic when you're trying to shoot out a car window as well. It just makes life difficult. Um, but again, it leaves me with two more wallet games for the Amstrad, which is the Hunchback Adventure, or Hunchback The Adventure, and Daily Thompson Super Test. And then I've got other games including Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Slap Fight, Rastan, Mutants and a handful of other games that I always forget the name of. Um, but yeah, so I, I can still envisage that taking me many more years to complete. Because they're not easy to find. Now the two ad hoc games I picked up were both released in 1994 by a company called Radical Software. <clears throat> who I believe were just... I think they made games... But one of the games I got wasn't originally made by Radical Software. It was made by someone in Germany. So he may have been a bit of a, a not an online distributor, but they had a, a mail order company. So first one I'm going to show you is a game called Mega Blasters, which my good friend Ash ate one before you bought the original copy of this from Germany a year or two ago. Now these come in pretty box standard, boring looking boxes, don't they? With uh, handwritten or hand drawn covers yeah really strange now you can only get these in the uk via radical but yeah on two discs Bom a bomber man clone not played it myself i've only ever seen it on one of ash's videos it looks very good uh i think the one that ash got was personalized to him i think the programmer 
done something to the program and put his name and address in it or something, which is pretty cool. No such luck with that one, though. But yeah, I'd rather have the copy Ash has got than that boring copy, but nonetheless, it's a very difficult to find item. Now, the guy was also listing off this. He listed um, Prehistoric 2 and Super Cauldron, which I bought three of the games off of him. Didn't quite get Prehistoric 2, but I did get this one, which is Fluff, which is a very pretty looking platformer. Now, these games, I think, or well, this game in particular, was written for the 464 Plus and a 6128 Plus. So it was one of the very few dedicated games to those systems. Uh, this is 1994 by a gentleman called Rob Buckley. So I'm not sure if Rob Buckley had anything to do with Radical Software or Radical Software just published his game. But on the Radical Software advert, there's many other games for the Plus systems. But I can only assume most of them never ever got a release. But yeah, it's um, it's a very capable looking platformer. Not my cup of tea to play, but yeah, graphically and everything, it looks absolutely fantastic. Those games, I think, may have been 50 quid each. Either that or 75. I've got a feeling they were 50 quid each. Yeah. So a relatively decent price, I think, for those games. <clears throat> to be honest, I think they were buy it, not buy it now. They were best offers as well. So yeah, really pleased to have those strange games. Now, another system I don't really go on much about in my collection is a PC. Now, most of the games i got on PC are still my originals I bought from the shop. So sort of from about 97 onwards. So one of my original pickups, I think one of the first games I got with my PC was Quake. I remember picking this up and I remember picking up um, the DID game, Eurofighter Typhoon. And I picked up Monkey Island. The third one. So yeah, you can obviously see my influence. But yeah, I really wanted to play a decent first-person shoot 'em up once I got off my Amiga onto a PC. So that's the first thing I bought. Um, but yeah, luckily enough, I've still got the vast majority of my games. I think I'm only missing one or two. But I've added games to it over the years, especially from Ocean. Um, but what I certainly would love to do... Um, I'll show you something I picked up, actually, from from Play Blackpool. This was um, 50 quid, I think. This was signed by John Romero, yeah. I ain't got a clue what it is. It's some add-on to Doom. I think. I don't I don't bloody know. I've never actually used it, to be fair. But yeah, meeting him was um, awesome. Listening to him talk at uh, Play Blackpool was awesome. But yeah, really nice to have that. That's one of the, the first new box games I bought on a PC for many years. Um, but yeah, I've not really bought many PC games recently. Most that I do buy now are kind of downloaded. I bought a lot of um, games that no longer work on this PC. Games like Theme Hospital, um, The Settlers 2, um, Blade Runner. Stuff like that I've bought recently from GOG. Because it's nice and cheap, isn't it? Um, but in terms of big releases, I tend to buy them now on the PS5 or the PS4. Um, but a lot of the PS3 era stuff I bought on the PC. Like Fallout and stuff like that. So... But yeah, I've not really had a, a, a big splurge, splurge, splurge on the PC for quite a few years. But yeah, but I have bought one recently. So PC-wise, yeah, I've got quite a lot of games. A lot, most of them are on DVD cases now, which is a shame. I picked this up, which is a sequel to a game called Innocent Until Caught, which got an Amiga release. A game that gave me migraines. I think the, the icon moved at such a juddery rate. Yeah, it gave me gave me bloody uh, gave me a bloody migraine. I picked this up. A game called Guilty. By Psygnosis. Um, I never heard of it. And it came up in retrogames.co.uk's website. I am denied about it. Because it was there for like 40 quid. I think it was on that site I read it was the follow up to Innocent Until Court. I went to eBay to have a look at it. And then they were going for about 100, 150 quid. I went back to buy it from his site. Which I think it had it for 40 pound. But it was incomplete. And that's what made me not buy it. I went back to buy it, obviously it's gone. So it took me about six months to rediscover it and find it for a decent-ish price. This was a hundred quid. This is the UK release of it. The European release has multilingual writing on the back. But yeah, it's, it's, it's quite good. Um, point and click adventure. It's quite um, politically 
incorrect in places. I'll leave you a bit of footage now. Don't you know the way to a man's heart is via his stomach? Believe me, lad, if I wanted to get to your heart, I'd take the more direct route. And I'd use a blowtorch to help me. Here's some food to ensure I bring you to justice alive. Hey, what's the point of leaving the food there? Mind you, if my tongue could reach that far, I bet you'd soon let me out. Dream on, lad. I did find that quite humorous, I've got to say. Um, I think that's one thing I do love about this collecting lark, is, is finding these games or listening to stuff in the games that you think, bloody hell, how did they get away with that? But I think everything nowadays is becoming very generic, isn't it? Very generic. No matter what you do, everyone is going to, at some point, be the same, aren't they? Be a bit, um, a bit of a boring world, I think. Um, yeah, so that's where I am with a PC. Um, like I said, PS3 stuff is mostly gone. Mega Drive, I've picked up a few Japanese Mega Drive games, but nothing out of the ordinary. Um, some quite, for me, nostalgic titles like uh, Gainog, Shadow Dancer, Revenge of Shinobi, Streets of Rage, or whatever it's called in Japan. Uh, Knuckle, Bare Knuckle, isn't it? Or something like that. So there's still more I want. So over over sort of a period of time, I will pick up some more um, Japanese Mega Drive games. So, yeah, Mega Drive, nothing's really changed, really. Same with the 32X, not really changed. Um, right. Next up, we are on to the Commodore Amiga. For the Commodore Amiga, Atari ST. Did put a collection video up for that as well. Uh, that hasn't really changed since that particular video, but I still am looking for ST-specific games, not released on the Amiga. And one more nostalgic game called Continental Circus. Yeah, great game, that is. I liked it as a racing game. There weren't many brilliant racing games on the ST, but Continental Circus was really good. Right, Amiga. So we've got three Amiga titles to show you. CD32 first, a very obscure system. I'm only needing two games to complete the retro games, um, or retro collect um, collection. That's what I was going for originally. There's different sources for it, and I know some people get a bit funny about full set collections where they start talking about modern games that were released in 2020, 20, 2022 games like, I don't know, I picked up a couple of homebrew games. If you think about it, you've got games like that that people will kind of go, oh, but this got a CD32 release, but the games in Retro Collect are games that you would have picked up from the shop, not from... Um, all making games today really so yeah i'm trying to go for the more traditional listing not thinking about games that i've missed out on because i didn't know anything about them if that makes any sense yeah cd32 i've got one game which to be fair the first game i picked up probably since whiz that must have been about five years ago very expensive game um very very serious so i first saw it in america uh, it went for like six hundred dollars. I think the guy who ran the CD32 project site, I think, it, I think he was selling off his games, or at least he used his material for the site. I can't remember which way around it was, but it went for a lot of money. So when I naturally saw it listed in the UK in Retro Pixels site, I offered a similar sort of money for that. Then we negotiated and got to a price that was similar to about six hundred quid that I saw it go for. And then it came up in Australia because the game originated in New Zealand. I think I won it there for like 360 quid. Um, and a guy contacted me or girl contacted me and said the person selling it had died. That was the last I heard of that, obviously. And the item in question is Word Construction Set, which is an educational title. So yes, the most expensive educational title I've ever bought. At least it helps me to spell words. I'll tell you what, some of the words in here are very impressive for kids. I'm assuming this is aimed at kids. But yeah, this was sealed when I bought it. I opened it up to have a gander, just to make sure everything was as it should be. Um, but yeah, very hard to find. It's the second to last game I need from that retro collect list. The last one being Will Bridge Initiation Junior, a French release game. I've only ever seen once. So yeah, so CD32 is still very much 
on my mind. I'd love to be able to finish off the CD32 set, games that were released back in the day, because um, that would be wonderful. Very hard set to try and complete. So far it's been 10 years, and that is literally the last one I picked up. Um, the Amiga wise, it's difficult picking out Amiga titles. One is a game that I've picked out because it eluded me for many years. And the second one I picked out, because it's more of a curiosity than anything else, I didn't realise this game got an Amiga release. And subsequently found out that more games under that banner also got an Amiga release. But in America. So first up we have 1943. Now this game, I only ever saw it on the Kicks label. Was aware it got a full price release. So I'm pretty sure once upon a time I saw it. Um... Very similar to some other games I've seen. has an Atari ST box. But has a sticker on it. So I wonder if Street Fighter got a release like that on the Amiga. Street Fighter, the one I got is just in a plastic jewel case. Whereas the SD version has a big box like this. But yeah, uh, vertical shoot em up. Not the best of conversions on the ST. In fact, I don't think I played a decent conversion of it. I think the ST version was marginally better. I think it was a bit quicker. And again, quite an old game from 1988, and to see it on the Amiga, yeah, 150 quid this cost me. Might have been a little bit expensive, but again, having said that, it's the only one I've seen in many years. And in lovely condition as well, so really pleased to have that. Got to where the bloody put it. <clears throat> and then next up, this game again come up in Retro Pixels store. Um, I've seen a few copies since. I think I paid about £150 for this. Now, we've all played Gryzor before. This is Contra or Super C on the Amiga. Yeah, um, a couple of copies up in America at the moment of this game. I'm not sure what it actually goes for. Obviously, you've got to put the postage cost on it and all the rest of it, but I don't think I overly paid for it, but I saw it. I thought, wow. Apparently, it's quite poor. Probably why it didn't get released over here, but I've never played it. Well, the games got released on this same livery. One was called Double Dunk. Another one, which I was baffled about, was Castlevania. Castlevania got an Amiga release. That I can imagine being a very expensive game. Never seen it myself, but I have seen a scan of the cover. But I know on the Commodore 64 in America, in a box like that, you could get Metal Gear Solid, um, Russian Attack, I think this, there's a few, there's a few C64 games in that livery in America. So that was quite a, a yeah, it kind of piqued my interest really. It's generally in quite nice condition this. Yeah, so I'm pleased to have it, it's just a very peculiar game, as in I didn't know it existed. So yeah, I've got to play it, I'll probably get some footage for this video, so at least I'll have the chance to finally play it. But yeah, the Amiga, again, I don't have many games on the list, most of the games that I have on my list aren't overly difficult to find. There's one that's not difficult but expensive, that being Moonstone. I still don't have that in the collection. Um, there's Free Ocean compilations from France, one I recently picked up. Then learned it wasn't from France originally, it's a Swedish compilation. So very hard to find. It came up on Christmas Day, I bought it. It's in poor condition, one of the corners is really blown on it, but I've never seen it before. And being a Swedish or a Scandinavian release of some description, I can only assume it's very, very hard to find. There's another one which is in France. There's a copy up there now, but the person wouldn't ship to the UK. And there's one that I discovered earlier in the year, which I've never seen before. And probably will never see again on the Amiga. So there's still three, two outstanding ocean titles for the Amiga compilations. French ones, that is. Um, but yeah, apart from that, Amiga-wise, I'm pretty much satisfied. I did cull or cull even, about 50, 60 games from the collection. But again, games that I was never, probably ever going to play, to be fair. And games that weren't in particularly great condition. So yeah, did offload a few of them. Um, ST offloaded a handful of games, games that I primarily have on the Amiga. ST is more nostalgia and more exclusives, whereas the Amiga is my preferred choice of 16-bit home computer games. Right, finally, Sinclair Spectrum. The, the system that I've probably picked up the most games for last year. 
I finished off the Hit Squad set, which will be in the video which I previously made. I finished off a load of other subsets, which I may subsequently make videos for whilst I go through my Spectrum collection, because my Spectrum collection is quite a large collection nowadays, so it won't, it, it'll probably need multiple collection videos for it. <clears throat> um, some of the highlights I've got, one is a compilation that I picked up to finish my Ocean set, one is a pre-Ocean game, um, which I didn't know existed, and another one was a bargain. So let's go with a bargain first. A game I'm not personally familiar with, but I know Dave Retro Games play badly, and Alex from Arcade Archive, I think his channel's called now. Highly recommend this game, and that is called Chaos. Magic and Death on the Plane of Limbo. Big box, 20 quid, buy it now. One problem with this game, unfortunately, it's got no instructions. But for 20 quid, which is about 10% of its value, complete, was a bargain. Probably one of the bargains of the year, really. I do end up buying and paying over the odds for some games, but it swings roundabouts with this hobby. There are games I've come across like this, which are, um, just make sure the instructions were under there, really, um, which are value for money. But apparently a very good game. You can play up to eight players. I think the more players you play, the better. Um, but yeah, you can get the small cassette case version of it. And you can get it as a freebie, I think, that came with maybe you, your Sinclair. But yeah, Chaos. Very, very pleased to have that in the collection. And then the next one I'm going to show you is the final ocean game I needed. Um, came up in an auction via the sales room. And that is Addicted to Fun Sports Collection. Again, very, very hard to find. This is only the second copy I've ever seen. The previous one was on Facebook. Um, so really nice to pick this up. The bundle was 100... I would say 180 quid by the time I... You pay the VAT, the fucking commission, and the postage via a courier. Not like a normal courier. But these people go and package the stuff up and send it. So it was quite expensive. The Spectrum obviously are sold and the other games that came with it. So I reckon this would probably would have cost about 100 quid. Which is probably a good price for an item that is one of the rarest ocean titles you can find on the Sinclair Spectrum. So really pleased to have that. So that puts that subset to bed. And like I said, the previous game I picked up is one of the Spectrum Games titles. Now I've got four of them. This one came up and I, yeah, it, I just had to have it. 50 quid by now, which is Rocket Command. Now nine games were supposed to have been launched by Spectrum Games for the Sinclair Spectrum. Um, five I have, the others, I think Armageddon got a release as Armageddon. The other four, I think Hopper was then called Road Frog. So two of them got released eventually. And then a couple never came out. And then Kong, which was destined to get the Spectrum Games release, didn't it end up coming out as the first ocean software game for the Sinclair Spectrum. So yeah, really pleased to have that. The only, qu the only qualm I've got is the cassette has no longer got its um, silver label, I suppose. Um, so what I what I need to do, I keep meaning to do it, is to put that in and play it. If the tape, if the game runs out just before the tape ends, I can only assume it's the original tape. But yeah, that's the only shame. The only part of it that's a shame. But besides that, to get that is again never seen it before or since. Very, very hard to find Sinclair Death Spectrum game. Is only the beginning. Well, that's it, really. Spectrum wise, I will keep collecting as and when. Got many different subsets kind of on the go, but not to the same degree as the Hit Squad. I ain't doing that again. But I will keep going for these different sets. I managed to pick off about five sets last year, um, which I was really pleased with. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I've got another system that I picked up towards the end of the year that I sent off to be repaired. Fingers crossed it gets repaired. And then hopefully I can do a video about that. But yeah, for next year, again, much the same really. I will pick up games for different systems. Certainly won't be as many as I picked up this year. And certainly won't be spending the kind of money that I picked up. Especially Hit Squad games for this year either. I've got to be honest, because um, it's not sustainable. <laughs> it really ain't sustainable. 
but yeah in terms of videos nothing different really i think i still do the pickups still do the rest of the collection videos um any other ideas you guys have got i quite happy to do different types of videos it's just finding the time to do them so yeah i hope you enjoyed this update um if you do enjoy it, i keep doing them every year i think last year was the first year i've never done one actually but yeah that's where we are that is a state of play with my collection as of today so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for sticking with me. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care and bye for now.